George, in your remarkable career, not only as a mathematician and a physicist, but as a, a, a truly uh, uh, great thinker in, in, the, in the broader sense of the term, uh, how have your, your sense of the, the deepest questions, ultimate questions, uh, changed and, and uh, flowed uh, through your life and career? Well, when I was a graduate student and then an early postdoc, we were concerned with whether the universe had an origin or not. And using classical GR, that came to a very successful conclusion with the singularity theorems, which Stephen Hawking developed for the cosmology uh, based on Roger Penrose's work, and I played a bit of a role in that, which was great. Um, the anthropic principle then came up and there was a lot of excitement about that through Brandon Carter, John Wheeler and other people. And that led to all the fine tuning discussion. But for me, I think the thing that then became important was this issue of morality and the nature of morality. So I wrote this book with Nancy Murphy called On the Moral Nature of the Universe, which put a particular view on that, which I'm still willing to defend. I think- Which is? Uh, that the, the, there is a, a moral reality that we can say when things are right and wrong in an absolute sense, not just in a relative sense, and that that nature is a canotic or self-giving kind of morality, not a coercive or um, legalistic kind of morality. And that would exist whether or not there is a God or not? Um, you might make that claim. It's It's... Uh, it's simplest to understand it in a theistic context, but that's not absolutely essential. Right? Um, what I think has been most interesting in recent times, um, uh, there have been attempts to describe, to now put quantum gravity into the origin of the universe situation and use that to discuss it. And that's been partly successful, but it's partly we don't have a good theory of quantum gravity. To me, the most interesting, well, the two really interesting things at a fundamental level. One is more and more stuff about the brain and consciousness, and I know that you are very interested yeah. in that. And I think consciousness is the biggest unsolved problem which we are facing in scientific terms. But in the bigger philosophical position, um, I think what is really important is what I would regard as a counterattack in the past couple of decades of scientists trying to take over ethics. And I think this is deeply mistaken. I think that they, the people doing this, they, they, these are various kinds of scientists, um, uh, psychologists, neuroscientists, uh, evolutionary psychologists. Um, and I think that none of them have studied the philosophy of, of um, ethics enough. I don't think they are aware of moral philosophy, the different positions. And I think they always introduce by the back door some incredibly simplistic no, uh, concept of the good life, which they then try to say is uh, defended by their view of how science leads to morality. And I think that they are all extremely naive. The, the, the one who is more sophisticated than the others is Jonathan Haidt, who's got a very interesting book out about that. Now, he is aware of some of the history of the discussion, and he's got a fairly broad analysis of different kinds of moralities. Most of the other ones are extremely narrow. For instance, there's a book called The Moral Molecule. I mean, it, it really is kind of just silly. <laughs> Uh, along the physics trajectory of ultimate questions, you started with the, uh, the beginning singularity, yeah. uh, then anthropic principle in terms of what we can learn because we exist as observers, and then to fine tuning. Yeah. Uh, and so, next steps in that sequence, is, as I have followed it, not as in, not involved as you are, but an interested observer, is that you have uh, theory to the creation of the universe and inflation theory, and then you get to multiverse. Yeah. And so, some people would draw that arc. You would be You'd be more nervous, I know, uh, about making that continuation. Um, I don't think it solves ultimate issues. I think it's a, a very interesting, in many ways, an attractive um, proposition, but it comes in ma many versions, and I really don't like some of them. I don't like the quantum multiverse, the many, yeah. the Everett version. I, I don't think it even makes sense to me. I can't, I can't make sense of it. And I find particularly disturbing the claim that um, 
we are living in a simulation. I cannot myself understand how anybody could seriously make that proposal. And in essence, it's an intelligent design proposal in which God is a nerd sitting at a computer. <laughs> and I think that that's a very silly position. And, and in that one, then you obviously have the question, well, who made that nerd sitting at the computer? Yeah, so it just exactly. Kicks, it, kicks it solves absolutely nothing. It raises hundreds more questions than it solves. So, so some of these things you, you reject. So then what, what do you accept? What, what is the next step in, in, in this l linear progress that you've had uh, in, in the physics and in the cosmology? I think the physics must be expanded into a view, a broader view, where we say physical causation is not the only causation taking place. There's other kinds of causation. There's logical causation, which takes place in biology. There's um, mental causation. And I think that if you want to look at the biggest questions, you must expand your concept of causation to not only include physical causation.